Hey, what's up guys? Fish Tank Mike here. Today we're going to talk about five awesome aquarium hacks that are hopefully going to save you time and make things a little bit more convenient. There's actually going to be a sixth aquarium hack that I'm going to have linked in the blog post. It's at the top of the description, so you want a little bit extra, then you can go check that out. It's this cool little tip that I actually learned from a boost plant story post on Instagram recently. I thought it was really cool and I wanted to share it with you. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with the first hack and it's related to water changes. And it's really simple, guys. Use some type of a clamp to hold your tube or your hose or whatever when you're refilling your tank. This might seem super obvious, right, even to the new aquarium keeper, but there's one thing I want to talk about, and that is the types of clamps that you're using depending on what you're using to fill up your tank. When I'm doing small water changes, like 25%, maybe a little bit less, or like I'm doing maintenance, and I only drain out five gallons of my 40 gallon tanks, and I just need to replace that, I will go ahead and use the hose. Now, I can do that because I'm not gonna create a huge shift in temperature that's gonna stress out my fish, and for me personally, I have very low chlorine levels in my water. Actually, you can do this yourself. You can go to your local water municipality or wherever your water comes from, assuming that you're not on a well, and you can look up all of the different variables of your water, one of those being chlorine. So here where I live, we don't have chloramine, we do have chlorine, and luckily for me, the chlorine ranges from between 0.2 ppms and 1.26 ppms throughout the year, with the average being about 0.97 or less than, just less than one ppm chlorine. And that's pretty low. In other parts of the world, and even the United States, that is a low number. I've compared it to some other areas, and it is very low. And that really does give me a safety net as far as chlorine toxicity. I don't have to add the exact amount or the required amount of dechlorinator to make sure that my tanks are safe. I still do, and in part, you know, when I'm adding from the straight from the tap like that I just add it as I go and everything seems to be fine so I'm really lucky but just in case you can't do that you can always use a pre-treated bucket of water like a reservoir that you have on hand but anyway that's my rant on chlorine okay so let's get back to it if you're using the hose to refill that is a heavy thing okay and you can't just use these regular little weak cheap clamps that you can find pretty much anywhere. So what I had to do was figure out a better thing to hold my hose on. And it turns out, I have one down here. This is an Irwin Handy Clamp, and it's just a much better, stronger, durable clamp that'll let you hold your hose onto your tank. If you use those cheap little clamps, you get the hose in place, but as soon as you turn it on, there's enough force to have it pop up off, and you don't wanna be filling your floor with water, right? So this is one thing, this works pretty well. I also have used these before. If you have thicker glass, or you know maybe that's something that you can't find, there's always these things. I can never remember what they're called. Uh, I've never actually had to use one for what they're actually intended for, but these things work too. They're just a little bit more expensive. You can use the cheaper, weaker clamps if you're going to be adding water back, say, through your python or a smaller tube, however you like to do your water changes, those will work. But for the hose, I highly recommend a more durable, stronger clamp. It's gonna prevent you from having some accidents. Number two is the credit card algae scraper or the gift card algae scraper, whichever you have. This one pretty much explains itself. You just pick an old credit card or an old gift card and you use it to scrape the glass on your aquarium. It's not gonna scratch it. It's totally safe. You don't have to worry about accidentally cutting yourself. I used to be a huge fan of using razor blades back in the day. I still am when it comes to those really tough hard water stains but the credit card, the gift card, whatever, works really well. They do make magneted scrapers like the flippers that you see here, which you can actually flip around and have a blade that's gonna work on there, but you have the problem of not being able to get the stuff on the back wall of the aquarium, which is a lot of the times where that green spot algae or whatever it might be ends up. Flipper also makes these scraping tools. Okay, I can't remember how long this one is. This has gotta be like a foot and a half and it's fit with its own card, but you can replace it 
with pretty much any gift card, credit card, whatever, and then you're ready to go. And it makes reaching the back of the aquarium a lot easier, especially if you have a big tank. number three involves a few different things guys so if you're somebody that is really into testing your water or you're new and you're going through that whole process of you know figuring out where your nitrogen levels are you have to do a lot of testing right and the API liquid test kits are probably the most popular they're what I recommend and still use to this day when I'm doing experiments or just checking in on things one thing about them that I don't appreciate is the fact that you have these glass test tubes they're easy to break I mean if they fall off a table they're gonna shatter into a million pieces. Another downside is that you don't have a precise way of getting water into them. You have to kind of dip them into your tank and then you get too much in there and you gotta pour it out and then start the process over again. And it's just really not convenient. So, so I've identified a few different products that go hand in hand to make water testing a lot easier. The first is some of these 15 milliliter capped test tubes, okay? They're graduated um, up to 15 mils. You obviously don't need that. You just need to go up to five mils to do your test. They're clear polycarbonate so they can fall off the table and they're gonna, I mean, they're pretty much bulletproof, right? And they're clear enough to where you get an accurate reading. I did some comparisons between them and the glass tubes that come with the API test kit and it was easy to come to the same conclusion using your eyes, which is how you read that colorimetric test. Going a step further with that, I recommend that you guys get some syringes so that you can just pull out as much water as you need and then you can easily inject however many tests you need to do. It makes testing your water a lot faster. The test tubes themselves come with a rack, so you don't have to buy anything extra for that. It's really nice, you do your tests and then you can just leave them in there rather than just having them placed on a table. That's really good, but then to go a step further is to get a little test tube drying rack so that when you're done, you get all the water out of those things, you flip them upside down, and the next time you need to go and test your water again, you don't have to worry about having any residuals left in the test tubes. They're clean and they're all ready to go. number four is one of my favorite ways to save money when you're setting up a new aquascape and this is related to substrate because substrate especially active substrate can be really expensive so what I've done for a long time to not have to need so much substrate to get the height in some of the scapes I do is I get these like nylon mesh bags they are meant for holding produce okay and what you do is you fill them up with pea gravel cheap stuff lava rocks are a really good thing to fill them with, right? To get some extra volume. And then you place those down as you're setting up your scape, when you're working on the hardscape. And what that's gonna do is just, you're not gonna need as much substrate. So hopefully you're gonna save some money and still get the result out of the aquascape that you were looking to create. You're gonna get that height without needing to just pour on really expensive substrate. number five is biomedia in your hang on back filter and this kind of has two hacks in it we'll talk about it so obviously adding biomedia to a hang on back filter has its obvious advantage you get more biological filtration compared to whatever default stuff comes with your HOB a lot of the times with HOBs you don't get any kind of added biological filtration you just get like a pad insert or maybe even like an active carbon insert um, but these filters have room to put biological media in so you can use a small fine version of a lava rock or even some of the smaller medias like ceramic rings can fit in there bio balls typically you don't have enough room maybe on a really big HOB but I think you get where I'm coming from here 
I like to swap out the mechanical filtration point rather than have it being the pad that's in the filter to down at the inlet of the filter. So I just put a little sponge on there to help leave out the mechanical debris that might go into the filter and then have the whole portion be that whatever biomedia I decide. So that's gonna do it for the five aquarium hacks, guys. Uh, like I said before, hack number six is in the blog post in the top of the description, so go, go click that and check that out if you're interested. It's a pretty interesting one, and you know, I happened to see that on Boost Plant's Instagram story recently, and I was just like, duh, that's, that's so smart. Why didn't I ever think of that, right? So go check that out if you wanna know, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload the next video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, somewhere in the recommended video section, there's some more hacks. Look for a similar thumbnail. Uh, I have a few more episodes for this series, so check that out. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time, guys.